querida gente del Mundo Whisky, acabamos de llegar a Glen Farclas, en esta gira agotadora, ya son 16 días que llevamos de trajín, bueno, con la alegría de estar compartiendo estos momentos con gente muy amiga, ahora vamos a compartir un tasting que es único, una barrica del año 1954 que nos está esperando, un Family Cast del año 2008 y un 21 años de Glen Farclas. Nos acompañan, por favor. Welcome to Glen Farkless. We'll talk a little bit about the history and then I'll show you the still house and the warehouse and we'll do a little tasting, if that's okay. So, this distillery here, we don't know how long it's been here. What we know is that this used to be a farm and the farm, they also made whiskey. The longest ago that we know is this picture. So this picture, was painted in 1791. And in here you can see barrels of whiskey, the chimney, so they were making whiskey then, but it was illegal. There was no license to make whiskey at that time. And so it wasn't until 1836 that they had a license to legally make whiskey here. Almost 30 years later, this gentleman, John Grant, bought the farm and with the farm the small distillery where they were making whiskey. So this was in 1865 that John Grant bought the farm and the name of the farm was Rechlirich. It's a good Scottish name. So Rechlirich Farm and Glenfarclas Distillery. So they were making this small amount of whiskey as part of a much bigger farm. And then over the years the distillery became more important and the farm became less important. So to give you an idea, in 1865, the farm cost 8,619 pounds approximately. And the distillery was worth 511 pounds and 19 shillings. That's how much they paid in 1865. So uh, now, 154 years later, we're on through the Georges to the current owner is also called John and his son George. So the fifth and sixth generations of the family. The ones on the wall here are only the ones who are no longer with us. So if they're still alive, there's no picture on the wall. That's the rules. Um, so John and George are the fifth and sixth generation. They're the owners today. John's away to Edinburgh because he has always lots of business in Edinburgh as well but we still see him every day. He was here this morning. He'll be back tomorrow afternoon. Um, so we're the last of the traditional Scottish distilleries, same family for more than 150 years, but also where the family really make all the decisions. They're really here all the time. So it's nice to work for that small family company. This is Glen Farkless house. This is where John lives. So yeah, he comes here. We see him all the time. He drives to work sometimes. It's perfect. It's been quite dry. We need some rain. No rain equals no whiskey. <laughs> this is our smallest warehouse. We think it's the smallest in the world. Three barrels of whiskey only. But there is no Guinness record because to have a Guinness record someone else has to want to say the same thing so to see to have the world record for the smallest warehouse somebody else has to say they have the smallest warehouse so they can compare them that's the rules Stills at Glenfarclas are still fired by gas directly. There's no steam system like in most distilleries. So underneath each of these stills, there's a gas fire whose job it is to heat the liquid so it starts to evaporate and so on. But this means that you need a special chain inside the stills. And the chain is made of copper as well. And this will turn all the time 
otherwise the yeast from fermentation it burns it burns on the copper just like you know if you're cooking something thick you've got to move it all the time it's the same thing so what happens in here you keep it moving all the time and so you have the gas fire and the rummaging chain so the rummager is the chain which is moving all the time and the red box you see down there that's the gas fire that's what's feeding that's yeah. controlling the gas fire yeah. all our distillation happens with a fire there's no steam used at all so it's a traditional way back in the 1980s the other distilleries were changing to this modern clean simple steam system and yeah. old George John's father said yeah. okay one still so they changed one to the new system they tried it and he went that's rubbish put it back I want my fires so they changed from coal to gas but still a direct fire So back in 1954, old George Grant, so the father of the current chairman, John, had to choose a colour to paint the doors of the warehouse. Red was cheapest. <laughs> so he chose red. And today it's one of the symbols of our warehouse, yes. of, our, of, our warehouse <laughs> of our distillery all over the world. And I can tell you that if you were to put a drone up and take pictures from the, from the drone, they look really cool. And I was told when I started by George, your job is sales because my father doesn't believe in marketing. John says that marketing people just spend money. <laughs> so we don't have it. We don't officially have a marketing department at all here at Worth Barclays, but we do a bit of everything. It's good fun. Of 38. So. Our warehouses here at Glenfarclas are never very high. We only have warehouses which we call dunnage warehouses. This is the natural style with the old stone walls, natural floors, and the casks are three high at the most. So the conditions for this one are the same as the conditions for this one. If you go to the bigger distilleries, the more modern ones, sometimes they're 10 high. So of course it's much warmer up here than it is down here. So we don't like that. We like to do it the traditional way. And all the casks we use for the standard range of Glenfarclas have been used before to mature sherry. We don't use American oak for our core range. We only use Spanish oak and we'll use our casks up to four times. So that's how we still manage to make a, a, a more balanced and sometimes quite light whiskey is by using a mixture of first, second, third, and fourth use of our casks. But they're all, they're also casks from Jerez. Um, always from the same company, which is called Jose y Miguel Martin. And they deliver six or seven times a year fresh casks to us. Now, in this warehouse here, with the exception of the front row, it's exactly like all the others. So we've got a mixture of butts and hogs heads. A lot of these are quite new, 2016, 2017. However, this front row here is mostly so we can show you a selection of some of our older fuskies. So this cask here is one of the oldest casks that we still have from 1953. So we're very lucky that we still have whisky this age. 1953, yeah. Um, and a big mixture of different years in here. So unfortunately not every year, so not everyone will find their birth year, but a few of you will for sure. Um, and we're lucky to have these. This is because old George decided when the whisky industry was not doing so well in the late 50s and early 60s, instead of stopping producing, he just said, no, we'll still make whisky. We'll keep it for ourselves. One day, this will be good for us.
the room here is quite special. So the tasting room at Glenfarclas is called the Ship's Room. Now it's quite famous in whisky circles, the Ship's Room. And I remember thinking that ships and whisky, <laughs> what's the link? And the answer is, there isn't one. But this room, all the wooden panelling that you see, including the bar, all the walls, actually come from the picture, the, the ship in the picture, which is the Empress of Australia. So the Empress of Australia was a, a proper ship that travelled between Australia and Canada and then between Canada and the UK between the two world wars. And during World War II, it was actually used for transporting soldiers. So there's a, there's a newspaper article there that talks about how the ship was hit by a torpedo. But it survived. However, after they stopped using it for the military use, they had just to sell what they could. And one of the things they could sell was the first class smokers lounge. And the walls in here are from the first class smokers lounge on the Empress of Australia. And old George found out that this was available just before he opened his visitor centre. So that was in the 1970s. So this has always been our visitor centre here. And in the beginning, there was none of this beautiful ceiling. It was all just a normal ceiling. However, they found the name of the Italian company who had actually designed the original ceiling on the ship. And family companies don't throw things away. And it was the same with this family company. So they discovered that the family company had still the original shapes, the original moulds. So they managed to recreate from the original moulds the ceiling as it was on the ship. So this is, this is our ship's room. Today, I'll let you try this one, maybe one other afterwards as well. This is our current distillery exclusive. So it's a single cask. It's a first fill sherry butt. It's 10 years old because it was bottled last year. It's one of the strongest things we've ever bottled. So if you want to add some water to this one, I would, because it's 64.1%. We don't mess around here at Glenfarclas. If it's cask strength, it's really cask strength, you know. Okay. So um, from this one, 656 bottles. It's beautiful color, obviously, because it's a 10 years in a first full sherry butt. And you get that prickly feeling of alcohol here in your nose, then it's too strong. Then you need to put some water in. You should never smell alcohol. It should never burn. If it smells of alcohol or it burns, then it's too strong and you're not smelling all the other wonderful flavors that are in there. Another one, just for a complete difference, is our, our core 21 year old. So this is the 21 year old that if you buy an airport or anything, this is the one you'll get. It's very different to the first one because the first one was one single first fill sherry butt. This one is made from a mixture of first, second, third and fourth fill all together. So it's much more balanced. Whereas this is really powerful. This is a lot lighter, more elegant and a bit older as well, of course. You might find this one is actually a lot easier to drink because this one has much got lots of power so it depends on the style you like. This is actually my favourite which is why I'll let you try it too. Bueno, querida gente del Mundo Whisky, desde Glen Farclas hemos abierto una barrica de mil, del año 1954, una invitación de la empresa, y acá hemos degustado un Family Cash de 2008 y el 21 años, el clásico de la línea que tiene Glen Farclas. Así que desde aquí los despedimos a todos ustedes.
y compartimos este momento. El ancho.